Former walk-on True Wilson. That lines up as the lone setback on second down and nine. Christian Turner, the true freshman, on the jet sweep, gets down the sideline. Did he stay in bounds? The officials say yes. That's a Michigan touchdown. I think that left foot is going to be the only foot in judgment right here as I imagine they're going to have to take another look at this. Wow. Talk about a tightrope. And certainly seems as if replay is going to want to take a look at at least two, if not three, of those strides to see if you can say he was out of bounds. Well, Ed Warner told us yesterday, you're going to see in our opener, and that one looks, I don't see any green in between it. I think that one's pretty definitive to my eye right there, Bob. David Reese was over there just to nudge Turner enough to the sideline. Yeah, that's the only step in question right there. But Ed Warner, the line coach, said, you're going to see a couple new little wrinkles in our openers. They don't script necessarily, but they got 10 plays. They call their openers that they want to make sure they've worked on this month that everybody knows is going to be in the game plan. Little zone read with a QB keeper for 20 yards. And a true freshman on a, on, on a jet sweep. Just the kind of things you'll see this afternoon, I'm sure, in the other semifinals where you have so much time to prepare and show and give your opponent something they've not seen. I was going to ask you, when you were playing, and you had that long layoff from the end of the regular season to the bowl game, how much of the you know kind of scientists in the lab the coaches become they're just trying to come up with something fresh for the bowl game that well, no one's seen I think, before I think you heard from both of those men yesterday Harbaugh and Mullen it's an, it's what they navigate it's that line they walk that hey, we're not going to get away from what got us here and what we do best but at the same time if there's tendency busters in both of these groups they're here because they have tendencies that's not a bad thing but they're going to try to break those tendencies early and this jet sweep just I think a bit indicative of it. This is not a quick review. You want to give this right with an enormous play to start it, but I just don't see any green whatsoever, and it looks like they're marching that ball back. Also, when you step out of bounds, the clock should have stopped, so there might be some bookkeeping to do to make sure they've got the clock right and it looks like they've got the ball all the way back close to the 38 yard line. Uh, well, After the reviewing call. the play the runner's left foot was out of bounds at the 38 yard line. The third down and one at the 38 yard line. Please set the game clock to 1346. 1346. So it ends up being an eight yard game and it's third down and one. High to the back of the end zone but that second down miss. Just not the awareness to have the eyes up in the full field vision as everything's speeding up. That was the big play. So Evan McPherson, the true freshman, 15 of 17 on the season. This one a chip shot from 21 yards. Florida gets it goal to go. Michigan gets a stop. And the Gators have the early lead. At U-Haul, we know moving can be stressful. Hey, guys. Wilson to the right of Patterson in the shotgun. Play action, fade route, Peoples-Jones, he's got it! That's a Michigan touchdown! Eighth of the season for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Michigan's got the 7-3 lead. Bob and Brock Heward, and Allison Williams here. In Atlanta, do you see a little difference this last possession for Shea Patterson? You were talking about the fact 
couple of possessions ago, RPMs, he's hot. He's got to yes. settle down a bit. <laughs> do, do you see him settling into the game? Yeah, a bit? I think that third down helps. And anytime you receive that was a deep out route, your receiver comes back and helps you a little bit. Man, it just can energize you as a quarterback. I'm kind of telling here in a game that I think is going to be highly contested. Two very similar concepts, right? Little fade routes down into the end zone. And you see a little bit of the inexperience of Felipe there, leaving it a little bit short. Shea had a lot of room and opportunity, and Donovan Peoples-Jones delivers on the other end. I'm telling you, Bob, if they add just a little juice, and Shea brings it. I think his charisma and athleticism brings it. But then you add some juice on the perimeter, a little bit of swag, and you can win those one-on-one -on -one situations. You can just give yourself a chance to do something you've not done much. Just one and eight against top 10 teams under Harbaugh. You've got to change that narrative today. That if you expose and there's no linebackers, your safeties have to fill that gap quickly, and they did. It looked like Dan Mullen thought about going for it for a moment until he realized it was a full fourth down and two. And so he sends out McPherson, who sneaks it inside the left upright to make it a one-point game in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Another sack fumble, add that to the list of polite, but better awareness for Michigan to salvage the field goal opportunity. So Jake Moody, the backup kicker to Quinn Nordine from long distance. Got it. Michigan extends their lead to four in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. At U-Haul, we know moving can be stressful. Quarterback draw, Felipe Franks, first down and more. How about the end zone? How about a Florida touchdown? The mom loving it, and they ran this earlier. There was a check with me situation. I highlighted how the safety came down and made the tackle. But look at it, it's the same look, four to the bottom, and it leaves really no linebackers in there other than this. This is the one guy you gotta beat. That is it. You have got to make one guy miss. It is five on five in that situation. A tremendous block at the second level. And Franks, I said to you last night, chance to be the leading rusher in this game, and he absolutely is right now. The Gators have a three-point lead. Still plenty of time for Michigan. All three timeouts at 241 on the clock. You know, it's almost like you spend time preparing for these games <laughs> because you said yesterday after watching the tape of both defenses that you thought quarterback run was going to be the deciding factor. Well, you've got two excellent teams, two veteran coaches that are really good schematically. And successful trying to spread them out and see that box count if it's any different and creates the opportunities for him to run. Finds P. Ryan for a walk-in touchdown. Two-score lead for the Gators. 20 to 10, Florida on top of Michigan at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The huddle with 10 on the play clock. A pitch to Jordan Scarlett and a walk-in touchdown. That's just really good football from that guy that's been doing it at the highest of levels for a long time. Why Dan Mullen was brought here, why that fan base was so excited to have him. You saw him on a fourth and run. Get Tony right out on the jet sweep out into space. That time, just the fake and the little option on Furbush, and there is nobody, not one Wolverine that could defend that green grass. A 
It's a three score lead now for Florida over Michigan in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Loves to watch his team compete. Fade to Tariq Black. He's got it. That is a Michigan touchdown. Right over the top of C.J. Henderson. Well, Allison reported it. It was Shea down on that sideline. You remind us some of your voices, some of your captains and leaders, and it was Shea that was in the ear of everybody. And he backed it up. He backed that talk up with some dimes right there. And does he possess the ball? Ooh. I think Tariq pins that ball early to his helmet. You're going to take another look or two or three at this because I think that that comes out upon contact. That under further review. And look at Tariq Black's body language right there. He knows it. He does. He knows when he hit the ground, the ball came loose and that he didn't hold on all the way through. And give C.J. Henderson no some credit for competing all the way to the deck and knocking that ball free. This is going to create a very interesting question for Michigan. Would you think about going for it on fourth and goal from the eight, or you have to make sure you get a field goal here to make this a two-possession game I think you with 12-20 on the clock? I think you've got to make it a two-possession game. I agree. Game. I would kick it. As many as your defenders that you have out on that side as well. And you can hear the Florida faithful that are watching on the jumbo screens here. The ball can hit the ground as long as you determine that the receiver has complete control and possession all the way down to the ground. Well, that certainly didn't look like he had complete control. After reviewing the play, the receiver went to the ground and did not maintain possession of the ball. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down and goal at the eight-yard line on the far hash. And here comes the field goal group. your head up Tariq a lot of football left to play here your team came back from 17 down in Northwestern I love Shea right there not a time to mope you did the best you could unfortunately just could not survive that contact with the ground twenty six yard field goal is good for Moody but that's a tough three for Michigan to have to settle for we do have a two score game again Back in the 50s, sod farmers invented play. Down by two touchdowns, nine and a half minutes to go. A must stop for the Michigan defense. Third down and long. And P. Ryan gets into the secondary at third and 20 and gets into the end zone. What a call by Dan Molum. A two safety look. The Wolverines on their heels, and you better not be on your heels. We saw Scarlett earlier with a tremendous run, breaking tackles, and P. Ryan 100 miles an hour. The two toughest players, Dan Molum said on his offense. May not statistically be enormous, but their two opportunities did they ever capitalize. The number one defense in college football just gave up a 53 yard touchdown run on third and long. True South is back on the road. Dan Mullen love what he's got moving forward. <laughs> you better believe it. And uh, here on the precipice of a 10th win this season, ending this year in the top 10 in a big block. Michigan blocks the punt. And it goes through the back of the end zone for a safety. And that's block number two for these Wolverines. And guess who? It's the leader, Khalid Hudson, making a play on special teams the second time they have blocked a kick. So that cuts the lead. The 34 15. I think 
The only unfortunate thing there for Michigan is there's so much steam as that went out the back of the end zone that you couldn't recover that in play for what could have been a really critical seven. That's how you back up that talk. You know, it's one thing to kick and scream and throw your helmet and do all of that. You know, it's quite another, you know, then to go out there and show that kind of effort. Day for Jim Harbaugh. Jay Patterson tipped ball at the line and it's intercepted. Gardner Johnson to the house. Turns out, Bobby, this Gardner Johnson guy is pretty good. Had the play of the game, in my opinion. His interception earlier, 13 to 10, a one score game. And I think he just secured himself with his second, the MVP of this baby. Got some help from Kyrie Campbell, the big 304 pound sophomore nose tackle. Got the right arm up, got the deflection at the line, and set up the Chauncey Gardner Johnson pick six. 30 yard return you know that might be the type of thing that Notre Dame is going to need to beat a Clemson and you're going to have to get some game changing plays by your defense and Brian Kelly like he